So we want you to learn how to create topology. We give you an example actually in a different region than your study area to try and get you to think about the principles first and not just follow the step-by-step -step instructions and then apply what you learn in this example to your problem for this week's lab. We had you cre create topology for lakes, uplands, wetlands, and a study area, and we require that various rules enforce how these features interact. So we want to make sure that, for example, the uplands don't overlap with the lakes, actually touch the lake boundary everywhere there is a lake boundary and there's no gaps, no overlaps. We don't want any of the polygons in the wetlands areas to overlap. We want to make sure all of our data are within our defined study area. And you do this with topological rules and a topology in a data set. So you have to create the topology. And the way it typically works is you create a geodatabase. And then in that geodatabase, you create a feature data set. This is in our example, this beset feature data set. And then we populate that with our empty uh, data, or we could actually populate it with uh, created data sets, field data sets, and then we create a topology. So I've done that here in this BESIT topology to give you an idea of what it looks like. I'll delete it and then we'll add it again. So if I um, right click and look at the properties, you see then that there are feature classes participating, land cover buildings and roads, and a set of rules that I created. We'll build then this rule table one at a time and validate the topology on the data that we've created and make sure that it matches these rules. So I'm going to right click here and delete this topology. Yes. And we'll create it anew. So here on the best that I can right click again, new, add a topology. And you see then it looks at the topology that's, I'm sorry, at the the data sets that are inside the uh, feature data sets, so these are called feature classes, the various layers, and lists them. And I want all of them to participate. Again, this cluster of fuzzy tolerance all set. I'll set it for 0 0.5 meters in this case. And we can set rank. So for example, if I wanted it to move land cover boundaries to the building edges whenever there's a conflict, up to 0.5 meters, then I would set the building with a lower number than the land cover. This might be a one, this might be a two. And if I wanted the roads to move the most, I might give it a three. So you can set the hierarchy of stability by setting the X, Y rank and the same thing for the Z rank. Well, I want to add rules here. So once I'm happy with the feature classes that are gonna participate, the cluster tolerance, the name and everything else, I can click next and it'll go to the next line, which is the add rule um, step and here I'll click here or up here where it says add to add a rule so I'll left click inside and then if I left click in the corner here double I can select the participating layers from the participating layers or feature classes now subtype doesn't apply here it applies for some rules not the rules I'll be adding and I can do a rule so I want this land cover classes for example to not have any gaps each polygon has to butt up against another polygon, so I don't want there to be any gaps between them. And then I can add another rule, and that rule might be that the land cover must not overlap. So I don't want the polygons to have gaps between them, but I also don't want two pieces of land cover occupying the same space. I want to add another rule that says the buildings Right, so I'll double click here in the corner and get buildings must be covered by the feature class of land cover. I want the buildings to be embedded in the land cover class. I don't want them to be in a going into the roads. So the buildings must be covered by a feature class of, and then I left click over here in feature class two, um, land cover. Now we have a description in the class of a URL we listed and that URL shows the kinds of rules you can apply and explains them at length. This is ArcGIS Pro 
online help, online documentation, and it defines each of these. So you'd want to take a look at these when it comes to your uplands, wetlands problem, or actually the big marine lake digitizing we're doing, and see which one of these might apply for the constraints we give you. Um, they're described in depth. So we add these uh, constraints, add these rules, and we'll go and finish adding the rest real quickly. We have uh, rules that the roads can't overlap in with the land cover, or, and the roads must then also be included within the boundary of the land cover. So I add those two. So once I'm done adding all my rules in, I'll go next, it lists the summary, and I'll finish. And it creates the topology and adds it then to my featured data set here along with the participating data layers.